welcome to the Runlet and Baldacci Report. We sure hope you enjoyed our show with George Mitchell. I believe that that's the third program he's done uh, for the station, two with Harold Pacius and then with his cousin Rob and me, a dear friend of mine and cousin to Rob Baldacci. Well, there's another man that we've had on this show before who is, gets a ton of hits. In fact, uh, prior to George coming on, they're going to go head and head for the most number of hits. This man, in my opinion, is like the Dos Equis man that you saw in commercials many years ago, the most interesting man on the face of the earth. I actually think this person would qualify for many reasons. He's been in over 40 movies, including what many people consider, including the critics, the greatest movie of all time, Godfather I and Godfather II. But to me, one of the most special things about this man is not only his sincerity, but the fact that he had a lifelong relationship with someone that I have revered ever since I was a young boy, and that is the greatest, uh, the most well-known uh, movie actress of all time, that would be Marilyn Monroe. Rob, tell them who we got. <laughs> Gianni Russo, welcome to Portland, Maine. No, it's great to you, have man. you here in Port. In it's person. nice to be here, not in Skype. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's yeah, right. Well, we enjoyed that, though, but to have you in presence, we just had lunch with this man. I'll tell you, folks, I could spend 10 hours with him. Oh Go ahead, God. Rob. Gianni, thanks again uh, for you and uh, Julia to, to come up to Maine. I know you're here for a special occasion, uh, but to take time out of your schedule to, to be with us today is greatly is appreciated. Pleasure. No. So I uh, was showcasing uh, a couple of books that Gianni and his uh, partner, Patrick uh, Picciarelli, uh, co-wrote. Uh, I've read them both. They're fantastic. They're available on Amazon. Uh, the Hollywood Godfather, which is really a, a book of nonfiction, Talking about your life, uh, which is should be a movie, no question about it. Well, I wrote that book, you know, to basically inspire. I'm seeing it even with my grandchildren and, and kids on the street that I know. They're not motivated right now. Yeah. I don't know whether it's the society or their phones or what all these pat tablets or they're right. Yeah. They, they can navigate everything, but they just not. The core is, and there's something missing. There is, isn't there? And so I just felt, you know, fortunately and unfortunately, my, my beginnings of having polio and being in a, a, a quarantine ward for five years without seeing no one, no friends, nobody. And when my grandkids come over, like, they, you know, they, they even say hello to you, come in, oh, hi, Grandpa. Right. Yeah. Right. This is, we got to get respect back. We have to understand what life is again. Yeah. And I think this book sends a message. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it, it does, does. Gianni. And, and just because you opened the door there, in your first interview with us, you did mention something that people wouldn't even think about, polio. Uh, I lived through it. Rob lived through it. We got the vaccines. Yep. You actually got it. You had it horribly, a horrible case of it. Uh, strange things happened to you. you you ended up killing a man when you were a young boy. I mean, that part of your story. The self defense. But, so when you talk about the kids of today, Gianni, do you, do you realize that what you experienced at, at that time was so traumatic? Did you have any clue that you could come out of it as well as you did? That's a, a great question. Well, I really didn't think I was because, you know, I was in five years in that ward in Bellevue. And, and the, the interesting thing is the building is still there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I walk down there. That must freak you out. Well, you know, I like doing it because it humbles you to yes. realize where you came from, what I have achieved. I'm, I've been blessed. Yeah. I mean, I've done so many things that I wanted to do. And most people go through life wanting to do and never do it. Right. And that's the other message. And that's the last sentence in the book is, yes, you can. I love it. And I believe that. Yeah. Then his second book that just came out this past year, uh, The Sixth Family, is, <laughs> the Sixth Family. is uh, a book of fiction yeah. except for the truth. The truth. Except for it is true. <laughs> my, my lawyers told me, you know, you keep writing books like this, you're going to go jail. I've never been in jail in my life. <laughs> I should be, but I haven't been. They, they didn't get enough on me yet. Yeah. But the thing is, I, they wanted to write this book. I, I you know, always collaborate with my lawyers. Some of them I've known all my life, yeah. famous lawyers. Yep. And they said, Johnny, you got to do novels. And they agreed for me to write four novels. They, this is the one of four. 
And because uh, the statute of limitations on a lot of the things I've done, there is no statute. That's so correct. Now, the that's disclaimer. correct. As a lawyer, Gianni, I'm pretty sure well, that you're true. a lawyer, too. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> but, so the disclaimer, which I think is novel, mm -hmm. it says, this is a novel except for the truth. Right. Right. So now I can say anything I want anyway. That's right. And, and as get a lawyer, away with you know, it. I get away with series come on. We know what it's about. It goes, by the way, this is a fact of fiction, although something. So, yeah, so you do the same thing. In your, in your first book, though, you, you've... Uh, You've made some uh, pretty uh, incredible st uh, statements yeah. involving the Kennedy assassination, Marilyn Monroe's death, uh, Escobar. Yeah. I mean, it goes on and on. And, it, and each one could be a, a movie or a book in and of itself. And you were not afraid. You were not yeah. afraid of being sued for slander, libel, whatever. Yeah, how do you deal uh, with that? I mean, well, yeah, so have you ever been threatened to be sued because of the stuff you I've put in your I've been threatened, I've been shot, been stabbed, thrown out windows. That doesn't mean nothing to me. I'm yeah. who I am. Right. And nobody's going to change what I know. And I mean, McMullen and company, who own St. Martin's Press, mm -hmm. they said, we can't publish the book. I said, well, don't, if you don't start taking stuff out, you don't have the book. Right. So I, I indemnified them. I was going to say, so legally, they said, well, we're not you have to indemnify us if you get sued. And we, well, we I said that before they even asked me, because <laughs> I'm not changing the line. Right. And I, I wrote the book long ago, and when I say Johnny Rizzelli was the kill shot for JFK okay. coming up that mall, mm -hmm. because uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, and, and Lee Harvey Oswald was brought in by Marcellos. New Orleans Mafia. A lot of people don't know, like Chicago family had a shooter. New York had a shooter. Everybody had a shooter. Nobody trusted each other because yeah. they wanted this guy out. Because yeah. Joe Kennedy, who made the deal for John, see, Joe Kennedy and, and Costello were Very partners close. in bro and bootlegging in the 30s and 40s. They amassed 30, 40 million each during that time. So when Joe came to Costello and said, I want my son to be president, he was already the senator of New York. Mm -hmm. New uh, Massachusetts. Uh, well, well yeah. Yeah, I'm not political. He lived in <laughs> oh, yeah, well, Bobby was We're in New York. Take care, what are we doing? Yeah, hey, no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. What I'm saying, so. Bobby was New York. What happened, well, one of them was. So yeah. anyway, they said, you know, we, this is what we want. They said, well, what are we going to get? They said, if he gets elected, the first thing we will do is invade Cuba. Because most people don't even know, when Castro took over, they threw out Batista. Batista right. was their man. Right. Maya Lansky, everybody. I was, the, I was in Cuba when I was 16, 17 years old, picking up suitcases yeah. of money. Bags of money, right, sure. <laughs> but then he took out and threw them all out. So with that deal, it was a win-win for the mob and for the Kennedys. Sure. And that RN, not my, me, I was just a messenger, we made him president. He got nominated and was president. The mistake he made was make Bobby Yes, of course. Attorney General. And who comes in and says, the first thing I'm going to start doing, for, number Let's one, go after, after organized that. crime. I mean, we, we, that's why I'm saying, yeah, I've said this to people when I've discussed what you said. I said, folks, that, 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 w that was an amazing thing to do. You put your brother in, the first thing he says is, I'm not going to go after the so-and-sos and, and the, the robocallers. I'm going after. And Gianni, but what you, what you are saying literally takes the Warren report and chucks it, Throws it out, the window. out the window. And, and uh, this giant, oh, the, and that's why when I talk to people and say what you've said, they say, well, Derry, what about the Warren report? I said, he basically took report. that and threw it out the window. It's gone. It's a whitewash. Uh, and, but nobody's ever threatened to like uh, to take you before contempt of court or some, something like that for writing such allegations. Well, you know what the thing is? I, what I'm finding out, because I'm, I'm living a lot longer than most people, and I'm just predicted to live to 115. <laughs> so the thing is that <laughs> when, when you get, you, even Trump, yeah. Trump sealed it again for another 50 years. Yeah. You're just waiting for everybody to die and say, Warren Watt, they don't even know what they're <laughs> looking for. 
But you were in the middle of all of that, uh, the planning, uh, working with, uh, take, taking money or whatever it was uh, with, uh, from Costello to Marcello. You bumped into Lee Harvey Oswald coming out of Marcello's office. And, yeah. Well, see, what was that like? Well, Mar Marcello's used to listen to late night radio all the time. Okay. And Lee Harvey Oswald got mustered out of the Marines. He was right. a marksman in right. Germany. Right. Germany threw him out of there. They knew he was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> he heard him. He was living in Texas. He yeah. brought him down. And he told him, you kill JFK. Fidel Castro will, with open arms, will welcome you there. That was the deal they made with him. Wow. But they didn't realize how serious this was. Jeez. Because you got to stop Bobby. I was at Marcello's barbecue on a Sunday. Now, I never heard of, and since then and before that, that there was a raid on a mobster's house on a Sunday afternoon mm -hmm. while he's having a barbecue with his grandchildren. And cameras were rolling. They right. came into the backyard. And Bobby was there. Kennedy. And Marcello said, you're embarrassing me in front of my kids. You're a dead man. So right away, so hold it. He brought everybody over you. You're threatening an attorney general. He said, I'm not threatening you. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and he said it. Jeez. And they deported him. Yeah. He snuck back into the country. They organized his killings. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, I, it's American history, world history. Speaking of history, uh, John F. Kennedy, you got to know him, you worked with him, you helped, you campaigned for him. Tell, tell us a little bit about your yeah. recollections with JFK. Uh, well, when he was a senator, Sinatra, all of them, Sinatra and Peter Lawford, which was his brother-in-law, right. they said they couldn't control him. So my thing was I was traveling, going to all the families and the unions, the culinary Teamsters Union. These were votes he could never get. Right. And it was funny because as we were getting to the end, they realized they needed Texas. Mm -hmm. And they made a deal with Lyndon Bain Johnson because he hated the Kennedys. That's right. But they said, JFK will have four years, maybe eight, and you'll come in after that. So he went for it. Mm -hmm. And they needed him. Right. When they started to plot the assassination, this is something's going to rock you. Go ahead. <laughs> Lyndon Bain Johnson jumped in. He was the backup with the Texas Rangers beyond the CIA to whack him. The CIA didn't like the Kennedys at all. Correct. So that's why this, this whole thing now with Bobby Kennedy, uh, I mean, Junior, yeah. running, and he said, my father came to me and said, the CIA killed my uncle. Now, if we do our math, and Bobby, if you're listening, you were nine years old. Right. I cannot picture you. your father coming to your bedroom, waking you up, and you say, you know who killed your uncle, the CIA? Yeah. He's going on television saying this. I Absolutely, mean, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, Thank God I'm old enough and I got enough money I can live anywhere. Because yeah. I don't know, if they better straighten this country out fast. We're in big trouble. That's, that's a whole other issue in terms of where we are as a country and where the world is. Uh, but. Uh, Gianni, uh, your stories, uh, well, a story, that means that your f factual citations of things. One of the things that I didn't want to miss before we, I, we could talk about that topic forever. Oh, God, yeah. But one of the things that I really want to know about you, your relationship with Marilyn Monroe began when you were 16. You had a little fling with her, a wonderful story in itself uh, that you wash in her hair, next thing you know. And then now you have most of her memorabilia, you have her diaries. You were close to her, but you have apparently uh, your intimacy with her, number one, was very strong. And the first question I want to ask, and I'm going to let Rob ask the, the big one, but the first, were you ever felt to be in a protective uh, feelings about her when she was being, let's face it, uh, abused, quote unquote? Did you ever feel the necessity to warn somebody, okay, listen, you better leave, st stop taking advantage of my friend? Did you ever feel that, or did you ever do that? Well, that's what basically I, I, I got involved because of Costello. Right. I didn't know her. And I met her accidentally because I got caught 
on the streets of New York by a truant officer. I, right. I was making all kinds of money already. And this guy stops me. He says, why aren't you in school? I laughed at him. I had like 5,000 in my pocket wearing Brioni suits already. He's asking me why I'm not in school. Yeah. And he writes me a ticket. And I was on my way to Tuchor's, which was the place to hang out. Sure. During the day, Jackie Gleason. In fact, I met Marilyn the first time there with her husband, Joe DiMaggio, at the time. <laughs> it's crazy. Though. Grace Kelly was there. And Tuchua was the watering hole for everything. Right. And if you, if you think about the history of New York in television, the Jackie Gleason show, all that stuff was done in New York. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. So that's where everybody hung out during the day. And I was constantly bringing money to Toots. He was the, the host of New York and everywhere else. But th those times, like you said, when I finally met her, because I had to go to continuation school, and I didn't want to go to school, because <clears throat> said, just go to Wilford Academy. It's on top of Den Dempsey's, which is one of my routes. Right. Sign in and get out. Dempsey's the bar, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I went upstairs, and sure enough, the girl knew I was coming. And she said, just sign in. When you're 16, don't come back no more. And then we are done. So I'm there signing in. I'm like 15 years old. There's 30 girls there. Where are you going to find 30 girls at 9 o'clock in the morning in New York? <laughs> so I used to go to every morning, stay an hour or two, yeah. and then go meet Costello. Luckily, I did that. Because Mark Sinclair and Kenneth, and Kenneth was already Jackie's hairdresser. Jackie Kennedy. Jackie Kennedy. He's the, the senator's wife. Right. right. <clears throat> and they were working at Lily Deschay. They needed shampoo boys, and they hired me. The fourth head of hair was Marilyn Monroe. I got to get a glass of water. Yeah. The water kills you, you know. So you he begins his career as a shampoo boy. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. <laughs> you put on your tax return, <clears throat> shampoo So boy. now the fourth head of hair... Is Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. And this is not a you know shampoo basin. This is a room. I go in. <clears throat> I don't know what's coming out of my throat. Must have been that Alij I ate for of lunch. Uh, okay. And I'm seeing Marilyn Monroe laying there. Enough, you know, we know the configuration. She's facing the ceiling. I don't even know how long I was looking at her. Yeah. She says, there's somebody here. I said, excuse me, yo. I still can't believe I'm looking at Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. And for, the, for your audience, I just saw Some Like It Hot. Right. Ten times already. Yeah. And she's sitting there. In the <laughs> now she's laying there in this basin. And I'm saying, wait a minute. And for a little more history, I saw it ten times at the New York Paramount Theater. It was open 24 hours a day then. That's right, yeah. the Paramount. So I'd get popcorn. And go sit in the balcony. I used to sleep there because it was open 24 hours. Jesus. And then every time I went to get popcorn, every night they were giving me more napkins. I'm saying, what's this about? They realized I was masturbating <laughs> watching Marilyn Monroe in this movie. <coughs> At my age, why wouldn't I be doing that? Sure. Now she's there. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, we know the configuration of a shampoo basin. Yeah. How do I clean this up? I got my three-piece set Is this on her shoulder. show or what? Go I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Go you ahead. Asked, you the asked the question. Have, give us the answer, Jenny. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't <laughs> open the door that wide. <laughs> well, I shampoo. You want the answer? I can yes, we yeah, we'll do. Right. I'm shampooing her hair, and she's moaning. Oh, my God. And now it's only making things worse. Yeah. Now I got to towel dry her hair and walk her to the station. And I get this cool as you can. I'm like, oh, I gotta walk <laughs> into the station. Then she started requesting me, and the rest is history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that is a yeah. history. It, but, but then things got serious between you. You became friends. You owned a dog together, and Rob's gonna do the other one. But when she was not being treated properly, did you ever feel the necessity, or did you ever say to any of those people, excuse me, I, I, I don't like the way you're treating my, my dear friend? No, Costello did it. Oh, okay. so you, did, you didn't have to do it, someone else did. Costello had the power to do it, I couldn't do anything. The Xanax 
and Fox had her contract. Okay. So he hit her out in the Waldorf. Okay. For a year. Yeah. During that time is how we got close. I got you. Okay. And I used to walk her down to a Strasbourg school on 15th Street. That's Strasbourg. where she went. That's where she learned to be a good oh, actress. Yeah. And she, beca- she wanted to be a thespian. Yeah. She wanted to be known as an actress. Yes. Not a, 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 a sex symbol. Right. Which, and we got close. Yeah. But I, what I realized, of knowing this great star, she had the lowest esteem. Yes. Mm. I mean, and people don't know this about her. Similar to us, how we hit it off, I used to look out my, my window at the ho- hospital, and I used to see the Empire State Building. And I say, someday I'm going to be uptown. Because yeah. I was downtown. Mm-hmm. She was putting in an orphanage in right. Warner Brothers Studio and looked outside and saw their water tower. Yes. And she started reading magazines. So all of these things, thats we just needed hugs. Yeah. It was nothing right. about sex. Right. Yeah. It turned into that later on. But yes. I didn't take advantage of it in one, one. I mean, when you come to my house, you'll see photographs that I have of her. Mm-hmm. And then when I used to leave her, she used to kiss a pillowcase and sign it. Oh. Oh I my ke- God! I kept them all. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> I always had this merchandising mind of mine. Well, Gianni, I have to say to you, my dear friend. No, you can't have a pillow. Well, no, I, I, I was in Vegas, and they had a, a, a pair of underwear that it was exact same kind as in in the the, the skirt scene, and they very authenticated. It wasn't the, the pair, but from the same set. They wanted four thousand dollars for it. I thought about it. I went back a couple weeks later when I was hanging out with Frankie Avalon, and I said, I want to buy it. They said, you're too late. So I'm putting a bid on that. <laughs> I just want to say to you that, have you seen the movie uh, that's now on Netflix about her? Oh, yeah. I mean, doesn't that movie move you to make realize what a wonderful person she was? Not only that, but it confirmed exactly what that's I've right. been saying exactly. in my book. Exactly. Years later, the movie you're talking about that came out this summer yes. on Netflix. Yes. Right. Bobby Kennedy said he wasn't even in California. That's right. There's no way an attorney general can go into a state where the police department doesn't know. Mm-hmm. They were pulled over on Sunset Boulevard. I got a copy of the a police report. Peter Lawford was driving, and who's in the back seat? Bobby. Yeah. Bobby Kennedy. They put Bobby Kennedy in her house for four hours before the ambulance took her out. This is all documented, not by me. Right. Because, like, oh, it's a story. It's a story. But for those of us but who loved her. it's a true story. <laughs> yeah. For those of us who loved her, and you loved her personally. Oh, my God, no. Uh, we, I mean, I'm, I'm very disturbed because she was a wonderful person. Rob, I'm sorry. I'm monopolizing. Go ahead. That's okay, Derry. Uh, Continuing on with Marilyn, uh, in your new novel, nonfiction book, whatever you want to call it, uh, right. Six Family, you, you, t- you relate a story about Marilyn uh, in great detail and then uh, make the point uh, that uh, Marilyn had a daughter and that in all likelihood it was your daughter. Can you elaborate on that for the, the people that are watching this? Because well, that that's a story that I... I think it's just now starting to come well, out. Yeah. And uh, well, I knew it had to come out, and I, I didn't want to be a part of it at all. I know. She's, I mean, Costello, even unbeknownst to me, had a lot to do with her mm-hmm. because he respected her mother. Yeah. And she, he knew she was being abused. And one thing you can, I, there's not one thing I don't believe you could read negative about Costello mm-hmm. as a right. man, as a person, as a friend. Yeah. And that's what attracted me to him, and that's why I am who I am, because of him. Yeah. And he fell in love with her as a, as a father figure, not, right. nothing else. Yeah. And he hit her out. He arranged, because he knew, I didn't know, that she had a child. He arranged for her to have the child, and she had the child at Strasburg's house. Hmm. They used her gaining weight because they found a clause in her contract that Fox, she had to stay a certain weight and she can get out of a contract, she's thrown out. So the pregnancy did all of that and everybody thought she was getting fat Mm -hmm. to get out of the contract, but she was pregnant. Wow, what the? 
No, I mean this. You can't. This you can't even. There's no way you could create this story. No, you can't. But you said that either, either you, you, you're the papa the or Joe DiMaggio. Well, we were the only ones that were being intimate with her at the time because she had no physical contact with anybody else. She was actually planning to go back with Joe DiMaggio. Mm -hmm. She was? Really? Yeah. They were, I mean, Joe DiMaggio made a big mistake. We were at Cal Neva. I was with Marilyn Monroe the last four days of her life. Cal Neva, that's in uh, Lake Tahoe, correct? Lake Tahoe. Yeah. And while we were there, Sam Giancana, Sinatra, um, a lot of other people that were there for different reasons, they set up her room to trap Bobby one more time. Because when Kennedy became president, he convinced her that's how naive she was that he couldn't be with her because now he's a Catholic president. Give me two years and I'm gonna divorce Jackie and I'll be back with you. But my brother Bobby's gonna take care of you. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. he took care of her. He impregnated her. Nobody knew this. We found out all together. It was twilight time at Cal Neva and Sinatra said, you gotta do us a favor. I didn't even know the conversation. I was just there to hear eyes and ears. Yeah, right. And he asked her to sleep with Bobby one more time. They have his room rigged, and they want to blackmail him like they did J. Edgar Hoover in Chicago. I don't know how many people know that story. Mm -hmm. You mean when J. Edgar Hoover was a cross-dresser? Yes, right, right, dressing up in the outfits, yeah. They created a party for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they had the pictures on them. That's yeah. why he, he denounced, oh, there's no mafia. Yeah. <laughs> and they were going to do the same thing with Bobby now. Sure. This righteous little kid, and Ethel yeah. already had like five kids of theirs. Yeah. He had her get an abortion. Well, she started screaming, I want nothing to do with these Kennedys anymore. I'm going to the press. Soon as she said she was going to the yeah. press, we all knew they're going to oh, kill boy. her. Ah. Yeah. Uh, she <laughs> called D. Ma I mean, D. Ma uh, Joe DiMaggio up in yeah. San Francisco yeah. to come and get me. He called Sinatra. So what's going on up there? She's upset. He said, mind your own business. Now, I always wondered, what if he came and got her and got her out of there? Right. His has changed. This was the last Saturday and Sunday in July. Mm -hmm. She was killed August 5th. Yeah. 1962. Incredible. Done. Yeah. Now the daughter, you, you're not going to reveal her name. Uh, do, you, do you still have a connection with the daughter? I have a connection, but not directly. I don't okay. want to. Okay. Until she's ready. I have kids I've never seen yet. <laughs> I mean, I'm seriously. I, yeah. have, I have a lot of kids. How many kids do you have? I, I have 13. What? Thir I have 13 kids and 10 grandchildren, fortunately. No, you, have I mean, you, know, you have 13 kids? and, and what, what's Well, I had, I had 12. I had nine sons and three daughters. Now, this year, she proved she's the other daughter. So now I got right. 13. I have four daughters and nine sons. Well, Gianni, I'm, I'm sorry to disclose this to you, but when we left the table, you noticed I went back into the restaurant and took your glass for DNA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gianni, one of the things I wanted to do, and I don't know how much time we got, but folks, the, one of the most fascinating things about this man, you've heard about the six degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon. No, 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 there's like two degrees of this man. I'm just gonna name a few names, okay? And some of them are gonna come off the top of my head. And I just wanna, the question would be, do you know this person? Have you conversed with them? Uh, and I don't need the, the stories because we don't have time, but I just got a few names I want to run out, okay? Of people that you have met, talked to, know, whatever. Uh, 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 Kissinger. Know him? Kissinger? Henry Kissinger. I met Henry Kissinger. You won't believe where I met him. <laughs> I met him at the premiere of The Godfather. Yeah, they okay. were good friends with Bobby Kennedy and all that. Okay. And that's the first time that, um, I think of his name, he sang the theme from The Godfather and we heard the lyrics. Yes. But they were all at that party. Oh. So that's why I met Henry. And then I stayed in touch with him because of the Friars Club and the political parties in New York. Okay, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Clint Eastwood and Maggie Eastwood, after Rawhide, he got 
a contract with a friend of mine, Sergio Leone, yes, to, to do, do a fistful of dollars, one Westerns. dollar more, and I babysat his house. <laughs> How about okay. Donald Trump? Donald Trump. Oh, Donald Trump, I love Donald. Donald Trump was a totally different situation. Before he was Donald Trump that we knew, he was at a show. I was an opening act for Don Rickles. Mm -hmm. And Sinatra said, he was my voice teacher. He said, you gotta go on stage and get some practice in front of an audience. So he arranged for me to be opening act for, for Don Rickles. So I'm at Atlantic City and I do my 30 minutes, I come off. And the security guard comes and said, Ivana Trump and Donald want to come and see you. I see you. Mickey Mouse wants to see you too. Get out of my dressing room. Because <laughs> <laughs> I figured, why would they not sit and watch the star? <laughs> and they were there. And they came in. I'll tell you, 19, I got a great memory. 1984, Ivana Trump and Donald gave me a contract. And the entertainment director was Tom Cantone at the time. And he said, our guys are going to call you. Here's his card. We want you to open up Trump Marina as a headliner. Wow. And I stayed friends with Donald even till now. Yeah, okay. interesting. Uh, uh, Putin, Putin. Oh, Putin. Putin, Putin, Putin. It's okay. <laughs> Calm down, boy. No. <laughs> Putin, I made a, 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 a... I am, for Putin, his manager, and runs the embassy, in Russia, the Russian embassy yeah. in New York. His lady who runs it. I'm the godfather to her son. And I met him at Nello's. I'm a nice little kid. I didn't know what, who she was. We got become friendly, and she runs the Russian embassy. And we were starting to talk about vodka, and Putin drinks Beluga Black. And my vodka was being sold all over New York at the time, Godfather Vodka. In fact, it was just picked by the Rob Report as the most important vodka in the world your vodka. Congratulations. My vodka. Yeah. The best in the world. Best in the world. Look and it up. March 9th, Rob Report. Okay. Totally own vodka. Nice. So we made a bet. He drank it on Skype. Who did? Putin. Putin. You make a bet with Putin. We made a bet. <laughs> Who's whose vodka is best? Yeah. And they, they had vodka there. We had his vodka with me. And we all had glasses. They marked the glasses. Nobody knew who they were. And... What I thought was, because I know how, how powerful this guy was, and I just admired the guy. I know, know a lot of people don't like him, especially now what's going on. But this is long before that. He drank this shot, and he knew it was his, and he smashed the glass right on the table. It's mine. And they went over and had a G on the bottom of it. <laughs> a G on it. Yeah. <laughs> Elvis, oh, Godfather. One, one more, Elvis. Yeah, Elvis. Oh, Elvis. Elvis opened the club for me. Jeez. You're hitting everybody I know. Yeah. I, I opened the club in Vegas. When I came back, I was hiding out until they straightened out the uh, whole Kennedy thing. I left right. the country for 24 months. Because you had to leave. Yeah. Right. And I went to Vegas, and which is going to be strange. Joe Kennedy and Frank Costello owned the Tropicana Hotel hmm. in Vegas. And I was down getting bored. He said, open a club. I said, okay, I'll open a club. And I knew Kirk Kerkorian just hired Elvis to open the International Hotel. Sure. And nobody didn't realize, I met Elvis in 1961 when they were doing the NBC special, sure. Frank Sinatra welcoming Elvis back. That's right. He's yeah. peaking. He's going to start to peak. Go yeah. ahead. And I was there. They invited me because that's right after we got John F. Kennedy nominated that's right. for the presidency. Right, sure. High hopes. Yeah. So what, that's exactly, was a campaign song. Yeah, yeah right. That's right. Sinatra. So I go see some, uh, Elvis, and he said, oh, wow, the kid's here. The kid. And nobody knew who the kid was. It was me. But I said, I'm opening a club. I'll have my car pick you up every night. So I'll be there. I opened the Tropicana called Tiffany's. I opened at midnight to six in the morning, only six hours. This is the only nightclub that in Vegas is open 18 hours a day, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You couldn't get in, because as soon as he started coming, I had the, the telephone operators 
on all the cabs, all the limousines, saying, you're not going to believe who's at Tiffany's tonight, Elvis Presley. He came every night. <laughs> no kidding. What was he like, though, uh, Jen, personally? Because you spent a no, lot he, of time with him. I, I spent a lot of time with him. I, I actually went on one of those flights on his plane yeah. to San Francisco for peanut butter and bananas. bacon banana sandwiches. Yeah, I right. went once. I said, you know, if I'm going to die of a coronary, it's going to be pasta. <laughs> Get to <know> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we had a live shootout. And yeah, sweet tell, 3, tell, talk, tell the audience about yeah. that. That's because we hell he's of a story. like Western movies. Yeah, for sure. And when he got mustered out, they gave him two 45 gold plated 45s. He carried them. Yeah. And we're watching a movie. And next thing, his crew's turning over couches. My crew's with me, and we're sitting on the top floor of the Hilton Hotel, which is now I don't know what it's called. Yeah. And we're shooting above, but we shut the whole place up. Thank God Jesus. there was nobody <laughs> upstairs. Oh my God. No, but Elvis was nuts. I've seen those pistols. They've shown him with those pistols. You get hit like this. Oh, yeah. He's, I mean. Pope John Paul. No, yeah. Oh, I, can't even, we got, I can't believe I was going to. No, <laughs> I was gonna no, pull that right. Go ahead, Pope. Pope John Paul. Any of them. Any, Any Pope. Of the no, Pope John Paul is my, my favorite. He's a saint. I've known three. Now he's a saint. My little kids, my grandchildren. Do you know a saint? You don't know. I'm walking out of here and I'm getting a polygraph on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, there's pictures of stuff? him with the, with the Pope. You see this? Yes. He gave me this in 1984. Yeah. Pope John Paul. What? So w what's your connection with the Vatican? And how did you... Uh, well, if you read... I did. ...that book, they say, I know nothing about this, that me and Nick Nitty... From Chicago from Chicago in 15 years took $600 million to the Vatican. Every time they question me, I say, well, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> where is it? Where is it? Uh, I don't know where it is. Part of it's around your neck right there. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is from, this is from the Vatican. No, I'm not making fun of it. I am so no. impressed. No. I almost asked you at lunch what that was. And I do want to say this before you leave. Uh, you told me before we began the show, you were without question the best dressed person we've ever had on this show. And I said to, ladies and gentlemen, I said, I want to wear whatever you're wearing. And he, he, you have your own line of clothing. I'm going on. I'm going to try to be the next Gianni Russo or Paul and walk around like that. Gian, well, uh, but the, the line is La Cosa Mia. Yeah, La tell Cosa the audience Mia. what La Cosa you... Mia by Gianni. Yep. Go online. L-A-C-O-S-A. -A. La Cosa, like La Cosa Nostra. I try to keep everything yeah. in that vein. Yes, of Instead course. of La so Cosa we, so Nostra, noticed. it's La Cosa Mia. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, while we're talking about commercials, yes. I always think about The Godfather, obviously, it's the movie I made. But the last line in the movie, when Michael talking to me before he killed me, yes. he said, Carlo, your punishment is you're out of the family business. Right. You're going to Vegas. Yeah. Well, right. guess what? I own the family business now. That's right. In 73 countries. So if you want to buy some good pasta sauce, go to Corleone Fine Italian. It's up right now. Amen. Absolutely. <laughs> but, Gianni, imagine the irony, and I know that you, 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 your life is total irony, that you have that line in the movie, which I have said to many people long before we become friends, that I said, you watch, watch his reaction that he really does believe he's got to pass. And the look on his face of relief is he can't wait to get the F out of there. As Michael says, okay, they're taking you to the airport. And the look on your face is, whoa, I just dodged a bullet and then they kill you. But the irony is that you are now pretty much, you are the godfather, da 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 business. The Hollywood the godfather. All that stuff. And do we ever talk to Al Pacino, or does anybody ever say to you, how did, how did you end up with it? By the way, I saw Jimmy Kahn last night on Alfred Hitchcock, I thought of you. Well, Jimmy Kahn kicking the crap. <laughs> you wasted your time. Anyway, <laughs> he's not a big fan of uh, I know, God, that's God, about Jimmy. But anyway, but yeah. Talk, uh, yeah what, tell us. About Pacino? Yeah, yeah, so have you ever oh, talked Pacino, to Al Pacino? About, you're about, friends with him well, tonight. Pacino, De Niro, I, 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 they're the only two right now, because well, I did another movie with Pacino, one of the, my biggest movies, Any Given Sunday. Yes, Great of course. 38 movie songs. Yes. And yeah. he starred in that. But Pacino and I, I mean, he's just a normal guy. Yes. In fact, during that movie, he got Beverly D'Angelo pregnant with the twins, who are 26 years old now. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> no, and I said to him, I said, you got some papers with her or something? So, oh, no, no, no. I said, oh, Al, I got mothers, that unworthy mother. Don't ever take anybody for granted. Get some paper. Sure. Yeah. 
And right now, you wish he did. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Because he created a lifestyle. Sure. And he has to keep doing it. Wow. You know, he's getting old. We Talk, all are. The Godfather. I think everybody rates it as the, uh, the greatest movie ever made. Yeah. And, uh, and you're continuing, what, 52 years later, uh, Gianni? Uh, mm. Uh, it's it's incredibly popular now as it was back then, and uh, there's a new generation. My son Teddy and his friends and uh, just just love it. We went to a law partners Fourth uh, of July party, Rob and I. It's sitting on the table as a, as a presentation. The, the, the CDs that are sitting right on Ken's coffee table. What I wanted to uh, ask yeah, you ahead. was uh, the show that came out called The Offer. And I know, and I'd like you to talk about that because it really characterized okay. you in a way yeah, that wasn't accurate way. at all. Talk about that. Well, no, I. And I how getting, you got the part. Well, I know. I was getting, yeah, even the way, that, the whole thing was, to me, was a myth. Yeah. And, you know, I, I fortunately listened for a while and then I said, I got to do something about this. Yeah. Because I have a legacy of how I got this 52 years. Why would I let somebody destroy this now? Right. So I. Got a very powerful law firm, and we settled. So if you watch from now on, where they really bastardized me mm -hmm. was hour eight. At the end of the series, which how I got this on, nobody's going to know how I did this. Mm -hmm. At the end of the series, of each hour that I'm in, it says, Gianni Russo, the character of Carlo, has been fictitious fictitiously portrayed to embellish the film. Okay. That's all I want is a disclaimer. Yeah. I don't want my grandchildren or a legacy, because what they said about me is totally not true in that. Yeah. But, you know, and then I got a nice check too. Good, <laughs> good for you, good for you. <laughs> but Gianni, with all your businesses, <clears throat> the vodka, the clothing line, the, the pasta, you know, your, your podcasts, um, uh, surely, in terms of being one of the movie stars from that movie, we got De Niro, we got Pacino, you know, they're still, whatever. Rando. And, and, and yet you, you branched off using the name and became literally a brand unto yourself. So, so while, the, while they, that movie's in their past, it, you're still, quote, living it. Aren't you? Well, you know, the thing with that, it's not me, the brand. I recognize that's the brand. Well, yeah, but, so but, I went to but you're the person behind the brand right now. Yeah, but I went to Paramount and Viacom and the brand of state and licensed it. And that's, paid. Of course, because I... You can't get that. As an no, attorney, no. listen, Gianni, if someone said to me, Derry, I, I would say, as an attorney, there's no way he can start going around and naming vodkas and stuff if he hadn't, they hadn't done the legal And things. I wouldn't do it because if I made it that great, yeah. then they'd want more money Of course for it. I would, yeah. So yeah. I, I sat down. It was an interesting contract, though, because I wasn't in the food business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went to CBS and them, and they said, well, what do you know about food? I said, well, I believe in the brand. I have a cashier's check. I was with my lawyer. I said, I have a cashier's check here for what I project will be the royalty for the first two years. <laughs> wow. I said, I'll give you that check right now, non-refundable. So if I fail, you made two million. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That was my bet. Uh, Gianni, um, <laughs> wow. when I, in, in my law book, and every time I lectured and talked to people about practicing law, one of the most favorite savings, sayings I've ever used in mediation or discussing with an insurance just like, make an offer I can't refuse. Oh, Not I've used in it a so many with, <laughs> Because we all know what that is. Yeah. And you said to them, I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse, which is two million dollars. And I, that saying is in a law firm that you know, they get them, they're saying all over the wall, and that must be one of them, make an offer I can't refuse, because yeah. it, it, it does make a lot of sense. It does. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, it's, if you believe in what you do, I, I, yeah. that's a part of my life. Yes. When I say something, I believe it, and right. I'll back it. So, you, mm -hmm. so, yeah, you put your money, quote, where your mouth is, uh, and that's what you do. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. It was used in a threatening manner, but we all know that it makes a lot of sense. Someone want to buy your house, make me an offer I can't refuse. Yeah, and I've <laughs> done that. 
or in a lot of, uh, most of my life, and, and, and that was long before, you know, it's the cliche now that's recognized throughout the world. But it makes sense. It's, it's always, it's a good business sense. Yeah. If you well, want to sell something, Any negotiation something. thing, when you're, when you're haggling, and well, by the way, when people don't realize, when you go to other countries, they want you to negotiate. You know, not like America or the CVS, that's the price. And so you offer that, well, make me an offer I can't refuse. Or yeah. just leave the, leave the gun and take the cannoli. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. Uh, leave the gun and take the cannoli. <laughs> You've just seen part one of a two-part series that we've done with Gianni Russo. I want to close this part one by discussing his credibility because I know that some things were said during his interview that some people might have doubts about. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you something. If those people were to be sitting with Gianni across the table from him, uh, they wouldn't say what some people have said to us. We'd say, oh, come on, oh, come on. Uh, we had the same sort of discussions with people when, <clears throat> when we had F. Lee Bailey on. So what I'm about to discuss with you now uh, is uh, the credibility of Gianni Russo. I can tell you that Rob and I, after we did the interview, attended his concert, his, his presentation, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> up in Wyndham. And I've got to tell you that much of the things that he said on the air, he said in front of at least 200 people. And he has told those same things in front of audiences many times. Rob and I did fact check much of the things that he said. For example, the murder that took place in Las Vegas when a, uh, uh, a henchman of uh, Pablo Escobar uh, uh, took a bottle, a broken bottle, to a woman. And Gianni Russo shot him. Uh, th that's a true story. That was in a Las Vegas new newspaper. Uh, the quotations that he has from various people, uh, these were things that actually happened to him. His uh, meeting with, uh, with the Pope, these are things that have been documented. And then when he discusses things such as assassinations and so on and so forth, these are things that he believes from people that he's talked to and people that he knows. We don't verify whether or not uh, these assassinations took place the way he said, but it's what he believes. So in my humble opinion, uh, the interview with Gianni Russo was an interview with a man who was extremely credible. And I say this, uh, when you're a big person, when you know people and you, you know celebrities or whatever, you really don't have to embellish things. If I tell people I know Bobby Rydell, I don't say that we've known each other all our lives. I tell them exactly how long I've known him. And that's how I feel about Gianni Russo. The man is so connected that he really doesn't have to embellish any of his stories. And in my opinion, he is one of the most credible people that we've ever had on the air, and that includes George Mitchell. Rob, what do you think about it? <coughs> Derry, I couldn't agree more. I mean, uh, uh, I've read a lot about uh, Gianni. I've read his books. Uh, uh, th the fact that he's been in 50 or 60 movies, uh, TV shows, it's a fact. Uh, it's a fact that he worked with Frank Costello. It's, uh, it's a fact that he knew Marilyn Monroe. And uh, uh, it, it's a fascinating life. And uh, we certainly wanted to showcase that uh, for our audience here. Uh, in Maine and now that it's available on social media uh, throughout the world. Uh, Gianni's 80 years old. He's been there and done it. <laughs> and he knows it, everybody. Right. He's, uh, his record speaks for itself. People can agree with his views on the JFK assassination right. or Marilyn Monroe's death or not. But that's what he experienced. That's what he knew. And, uh, and he's not backing away from it. And if you notice, no one's really filed a suit against him uh, <laughs> for slander or anything else. That's so correct. The record uh, speaks for itself. Uh, and the fact that he will say pretty much the same things in front of 250 or more witnesses, uh, that speaks for itself. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we hope you enjoyed the interview with Gianni Russo, and we hope you'll watch part two.